Chris Tiernet here for Car Player TV, and I'm with Blair Hinkle. He's got 1.4 million in chips going into day five of the World Choose a Poker Main event. Now, you won a race at last year. You were you and Grant were the brother duo, and I've been following his tweets uh, and, and your progress in the main event. Yeah. Um, so tell me how yesterday went for you. Yesterday was really good. Um, I ended day three uh, really well, and I uh, got up to like 540,000. Mm -hmm. So I started day four with that much. And uh, I won a couple big pots early on and jumped in the first hour or two up to like 900k. Okay, tell me about those couple pots. Were, uh, were they big decisions or...? Um, kind of. Like, uh, one of them I had Alex Kristachenko or something like that. He's a Russian guy um, and I knew he was good. Uh, he was directly on my left and I opened ace-queen from under the gun and he just called. I figured he would play a lot of pots against me. And the flop came king, jack, jack. So I had a gut shot. And uh, I bet out like 17,000. He made it 40K pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And I thought he could be bluffing. Um, plus, I have outs against like certain kings. So um, I called. And the turn was a 10. So I ended up hitting the straight on the turn. Mm -hmm. And I checked to him again. And he bet like uh, 60,000 maybe. So I was kind of worried, maybe he has like Jack-10, maybe he has King-Jack, but I still got a call because I have the straight, and mm -hmm. he could be value betting a king. So I call, and the river came a pretty bad card. It came an ace, so any queen makes a straight, mm -hmm. and also ace-jack just filled up. Mm -hmm. So I just checked again, and he checked behind, and he said he had ace-king. I, I believe him, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure if he did or not. But, um, yeah, so that was a pretty big pot early on. And, uh, and then I just won a couple decent-sized pots to get up to uh, 900 or so. Okay, how have your tables been along the road? Uh, day threes was probably, and yesterdays were pretty tough. Um, especially yesterday I had uh, Ludovic move to my table mm -hmm. um, and he came to the table with like 1.2 million and I had around a million so mm. we kind of, we didn't really get in each other's way too much but the couple of pots that we did play um, ended up being pretty big uh, just because our stacks were bigger and I, I mean, yeah. uh, we kind of got into it a little bit, but not, not really. I mean, we were pretty friendly with each other at the table. Didn't really want to get into a two million chip pot. Right. When you're at a table and you're another big stack against another good player, is there anything that you want to do to kind of establish yourself or to kind of let them know that they can't be playing stacks against you or, or something? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it depends on the player. Like, uh, if it's a good player, um, I'll usually start off um, a little bit easier on them and just kind of get a feel for how much they're raising mm -hmm. and maybe see what they're showing down. Because if they're showing hands, like Ludovic yesterday showed down a hand where he raised under the gun with like 4-7 offsuit. Under the gun? Yeah. Okay. And so, I mean, after he showed that hand down, I was kind of like, okay, he's definitely getting out of line. Mm -hmm. So then I started um, re-raising him some more and that's where we got into some bigger pots. And yeah, like it's good if the person's like constantly, like if you're on the button and you have a position on them and they're constantly like raising the cutoff, like the button is supposed to be where you're making a lot of chips, so mm -hmm. it's good to kind of slow them down, call a lot more, or mm -hmm. raise them a lot more to keep them from raising from your spot that you were going to steal from. Right. Put them in uncomfortable situations, right. putting our position. Okay, so you've got 1.4 million. Did, did you see your table draw for today yet? Yes, I did. I have a bunch of short stacks on my table today. Okay. So how do you do with that with a bunch of short stacks? You just got to make sure that if you open, you're not priced in to call with bad hands or... Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of see what the table will give me, mm -hmm. I guess. But they're not so short that they can just shove on me, okay. which is pretty good. Uh, some of them are, but I think for the most part I can just win a lot of pots. Um, Anyone you recognize? Pre-flop and on the flop. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think I recognized a couple players from uh, their online screen names, but that's oh, okay. about it. And I hadn't played with them hardly at all. I just knew that they played online. All right. So how are you holding up after these days of of, of play and and grinding and the the emotional stress? How are you holding up? Uh, pretty well actually. Um, day two and day three were pretty stressful because for most of those days I was just kind of hanging around where I started the day at. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up doing well at the end of each day, so it felt good to like have the pressure off me that I wasn't going to be like short stacked going into the next day. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday I just ran so good, like 
I didn't, I made a few mistakes, but it didn't really matter because I had so many chips. I mean, mm -hmm. it matters to me. Like, I know, like, I can't just give away chips. Right. But at the same time, I was running so good and, like, everything was working that I, I just felt, like, no pressure at all at the table. All right, well, we've got a lot of chips today and you got some momentum coming from yesterday. We've got to let you get down to the Turner area, but thank you so much for coming in. All right, thank you. Chris Turnett with Blair Hinkle for CarPlay TV.